out of the 12 uh, paradoxical pairs, they all seem important. But I'm just curious, over your time working with this instrument, have you found that a couple of those are more critical than others? Certain of them are going to be more critical as to certain jobs than to other jobs. There are paradoxes that I do look at that um, I know create the potential for highly counterproductive behavior in an organization. Um, people who may be a very good fit for the job, but you look and say, gosh, we're going to have issues. For instance, one of the paradoxes that Dr. Harrison has is self-esteem. The two traits are self-acceptance and self-improvement. Someone who has balance there is going to have a good sense of themselves. They'll accept where they are, also understand where they have opportunity to grow and be very, very conscious of wanting to grow in those areas. So we're good with who we are and we're always striving to improve. Low self-acceptance is a trait that creates an imbalance that can have a very negative impact in an organization. If someone has low self-acceptance, the tendency is to take corrective feedback personally, not as objective feedback that's there to promote growth, but you know, I have to defend myself. So it creates defensiveness in an organization taking things personally in an organization, and that leads often to a lot of drama in an organization or misunderstanding or hurt feelings on what is actually just trying to give da data to somebody so that you can get a better outcome. Um, so you begin to see that as counterproductive behavior and can, in my experience, lead very often to um, derailment. Um, another is authoritarian. I think as a manager, you need to have the ability to, the two traits are the ability to, the desire actually, to make a decision and to take responsibility for that decision. It's balanced with collaborative, the, the tendency to enroll other people in the decision. As you move up in an organization and you're a manager in an organization, you no longer have direct control over the outcome. People are doing that. You are creating the authority for them to do that. You need to make decisions in certain instances, but in order to, to really enroll people, you need to make sure that they have their, their say, that if they have a stake, they're included in the decision. And that really builds a, a much more productive outcome and a much more productive culture. Um, another paradox that tends to be really interesting is um, pairing certainty with open and reflectiveness. You know, we certainly, in, in leadership positions, in management positions, we need to be confident in, in the outcome. One thing that I've learned in, in, in life and, and in business is that one of the most important insights I've gotten is that after food and shelter, the most compelling human need, the thing we most need, is to be understood. Not agreed with, just understood. If you don't have that open and reflectiveness, that desire to understand somebody, you can have some, some, some major repercussions. Balance looks like, I know what I think, Jim. I'm very interested in what you think. And if you make a good point, I'm going to change my mind. If you're overly certain and I'm not listening to you, it gets into something that many people find to be really an obnoxious trait and that it's dogmatic. I have a need to be right. I am right. I really don't care about what you think. That is one of the, the things that will take um, somebody off the track very, very quickly. People will really select those people out very quickly. Another paradox is about accountability. Um, if we, the two traits are enforcing, which is a natural inclination to enforce rules and to apply rules. It's balanced, however, with warmth and empathy. A sensitivity to what is the impact of that rule on the individual. And it's a balance. If you lack the ability to enforce, you move into high permissiveness. And you really can lack accountability in an organization. It's interesting, I was working doing a turnaround of a company a number of years ago. And as we began to profile the senior team, it, one thing that was, was starkly obvious was all of the senior executives were highly permissive. They didn't like enforcing. They didn't want to apply the rules. And what was interesting is they had 16 salespeople and they had 14 comp plans. And we said, you know, we have to get to a point where we have some consistency in the comp plans. And the red flags went up, oh, but, you know, 
Ted will leave and Bob will leave and Bob will take this. We just have to accommodate all these people. And we said, well, if they leave, it's not going to make you any worse off than you are now. Mm -hmm. So let us try to work this. I think we can come up with a fair compensation plan, rules that everybody will agree with. And you know, it was interesting. We did. And we applied it to the entire sales force and not one person left. And they, they kind of concluded that maybe there is something to this accountability factor. So, but you can see, permissiveness is the imbalance that can drive a lot of lack of performance in an organization. So those are some of the key things that I see drive derailing behavior.